Hey everyone, I hope we're all doing well. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit lower because it's actually 6.41 in the morning. So I don't want to piss off my neighbors. But um, yeah, we are here to start off where we stopped last time. So today we are going to do this principles of security room. But first, let me just give a shout out to CMnetic. Um, this is Ben, he's a junior content engineer and lead room reviewer at TryHackMe, he's 22 years old. He's great, he's doing a great job, um, he's creating a lot of rooms for you guys to practice on. So make sure you show him some love, I'll make sure I'll leave the links to his socials and the link to this room on the video description below. So yeah, let's just get started. Um, yeah, once again, this will be um, a more theoretical room so there are a lot of things to read and i'm gonna try to make this video short so you don't get bored or you don't fall asleep as i would as i'm as i'm doing this okay so the main obje objective of this room is to learn the principles of information security that secures data and protects systems from abuse okay so this is more of a room um when you'll find some of the basic and most important concepts about information security. Uh, and one that I can see right off the bat is here, Defense in Depth. So let's just read this. Um, the following room is going to outline some of the fundamental principles of information security. Yeah, uh, like I was saying, the frameworks used to protect data and systems to the elements of what exactly makes data secure. Okay, the measures, frameworks, and protocols discussed throughout this room all play a small part in defense in depth. Yeah, defense in depth is basically um, a set of measures and frameworks and protocols working at the same time uh, to make sure you have the best security posture possible. Defense in depth is use of multiple varied layers of security to an organization systems and data in the hopes that multiple layers will provide redundancy in an organization security perimeter. Yeah, that's a better explanation than what I just said. So yeah, let's um, press continue here and let's go to our task two, which is our first task because we didn't have any questions on the first one. Okay, so here we are going to talk about the CIA Triad. The CIA Triad is a, it's an acronym uh, that mentions the three uh, main um, concepts of security, which stand for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And here they explain you um, each one of them. So confidentiality. This element is the protection of data from unauthorized access and misuse. Organizations will always have some form of sensitive data stored on their systems. To provide confidentiality is to protect this data from parties that it is not intended for. So it is pretty self-explanatory. Then you have integrity. Um, the CIA triad element of integrity is the condition where information is kept accurate and consistent unless authorized change are made. It is possible for the information to change because of careless access and use, errors in the information system, or unauthorized access and use. In the CIA triad, integrity is maintained when the information remains unchanged, during storage, transmission, and usage not involving modification to the information. Steps must be taken to ensure that data cannot be altered during or by unauthorized people, for example, in a breach of confidentiality. Yeah, that is also pretty self-explanatory. So integrity is when you're trying to make sure that information is not changed or tempered uh, unless you, you mean to, unless there is an intentional change or unless there are a, a, an authorized user um, changing that information. Okay, so now availability. Availability is making sure that systems and applications and services are available when you need them. So in order for data to be useful, it must be available and accessible by the user. Yeah, the main concern in the CIA triad is that information should be available when authorized users need to access it. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at our questions. What element of the CIA triad ensures that data cannot be altered by unauthorized people? So this is integrity. 
for some reason when i press record uh i just can type i think i get nervous or something like that uh what element of the cia tried ensures that data is available so that is availability oops what element of the CIA tried ensures that that is only accessed by authorized people? So that is confidentiality. My Kips lock is working funny. Okay, so we got our first task. That's awesome. Let's go for task three. Um, principles of privileges. So here we are talking about two uh, key concepts that are used um, to manage access rights of individuals and those uh, concepts are first privilege identity identity management um, BIM and privilege access management so these concepts are similar but they are a little bit different here the explanation that they give you is that BIM uh, that stands for privilege identity management is used to translate a user's role within an organization into an access role on a system. Whereas PAM, that stands for Privilege Access Management, is the management of the privileges a system's access role has, amongst other things. So PAM also incorporates uh, more things than just assigning access to, to systems. It also encompasses enforcing security policies, such as password management, auditing policies, and reducing the attack surface a system faces okay so let's look at our questions here um this task is only about these two key concepts so uh what does the acronym pim stand for okay so that is privilege uh, identity management Okay, then we have the same, but for access, let me just copy this to make it easier for me. Yeah, if you wanted to manage um, the privileges a system access role had, what methodology would you use? They are giving us a hint here. Okay, so they just want the acronym. So here they are talking about access role. So this is PAM. This is privilege access management. Uh, you are trying to manage the privileges a system access role has. And then if you wanted to create a system role that is based on a user's role or responsibilities within an organization, what, the, what methodology is this? So this is PIM. This has to do with the identity, the role of an employee. Okay, that was easy. And these questions, once again, are meant to be easy. These questions are meant for you to make sure that you retain the information that you just read um, on the text above. Okay, so let's go for the next task. It's task four, uh, which is about security models continued. Now here they talk about two different models, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce this name because I, I don't think I will get it. But yeah, this... Okay, I'll try it. Bella Padula? Padula? I don't know. Um, okay, so this model is used to achieve confidentiality. This model has a few assumptions, such as organization's hier hierarchical structure it is used in, where everyone's responsibilities role are, re are well defined. The model works by granting access to pieces of data, call it objects, on a strictly need to know basis. This model uses the rule no write down, no read up. Okay. So, as you can see, one of the main um, uh, attributes of this model is that you simply cannot read up. So, if you're working with confidential information, uh, you can't read anything that is secret or top secret. But if you, you're working with uh, a top secret clearance, uh, you can read everything uh, that is um, down here on the other um, classifications of information. And then you have the, uh, uh, once again, BIBA, BIBA, I don't know, uh, the BIBA model. Um, it is equivalent to the other one, uh, but it's meant for the integrity of the CIA triad. So the other one is focusing on confidentiality and this one is, fo is focusing on integrity. 
So this model applies to the rule um, applies the rule to objects data and subjects that are the users that can be summarized as no write up, no read down. So it's quite of the opposite as the other model. This rule means that subjects can read or write contact to objects at or below their security level, but can only read the contents of objects above the subject's level. So it's quite of the opposite, as you can see here. Uh, you can read everything up, uh, but you can read down. Um, so, and this model is used in organizations or situations where integrity is more important than confidentiality. This will be important for our questions, I guess. For example, in software development, developers may only have access to the code that is necessary for their job. They may not need access to critical pieces of information such as databases, etc. Okay. Um, so what is the name of the model that uses the rule can't read up, can read down? Okay, so here on the Biba or Biba model, uh, you can read up, so it's not this one, so it has to be um, this one, the first one. So let me just copy paste it to make it easier. Um, yep. All right, let's just check what int are they giving us. Okay. What is the name of the model that uses the rule can read up, can't read down? So this is the Biba model. Do you have to write D? Yeah, you have. For some reason. Okay. <laughs> if you were a military, what security module would you use? So here, I guess I would use uh, the first one because it's more focused on confidentiality. And if you're in a military context, I think confidentiality will be very, very important. Let's see the hint. Okay, so this is just for the formatting of the answer. If you were a software developer, what security model would the company perhaps use? So here the, we just read an example for software development here after the Bible model. So we know that this is the model that you're supposed to use uh, if you're talking about just these two for an example. Okay, so you can read all the text here above. You have advantages and disadvantages for each one of the models, but I'm just not going to read them all because it's going to make the video uh, much, much bigger. Okay, so we are on our final task, task five. Uh, this one is great. Um, okay, threat modeling and incident response. Threat modeling is the process of reviewing, improving and testing the security protocols in place in an organization's in information technology infrastructure and services. Oof, that phrase was, was tough to read. A critical stage of the threat modeling process is identifying likely threats that an application or system may face, the vulnerabilities a system or application may be vulnerable to. The threat modeling process is very similar to a risk assessment made in workspaces for employees and customers. The principles all return to preparation, identification, mitigations, and review. So you have this cycle here on the right. Um, it is, however, a complex process that needs constant review and discussion with a dedicated team. So an, an, effective, an effective threat model includes threat intelligence, asset identification, mitigation capabilities, and risk assessment. Um, these are all very complex uh, concepts. Uh, you can have pretty much just a course or a subject in your degree or in your um, course, um, just about one of these. Uh, you can study a lot about of this individually. So to help with this, there are frameworks such as Stride. Uh, Stride was created by Microsoft and stands for spoofing identity, tampering with data, repudiation um, threats, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privileges. These are all incidents uh, that companies have to deal with. And pasta, okay, for my Italian viewers out there, I don't think uh, there is a single Italian viewer out there, but if there is, hey man, or girl. Um, Okay, so PASTA stands for Process for Attack Simulation and Threat Analysis. InfoSec never tasted so good. Yeah, they had to give a joke there. Um, let's detail Stride below. Okay, so as I said, Stride was created by Microsoft. They are telling you here on 
1999. Okay, so here are the principles we just read. Spoofing, tempering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privileges. So this is one of the, one of the worst case scenarios, as they tell you here. Okay, so then uh, you have incident response and you have to classify uh, those incidents uh, depending on the urgency or impact to make sure you can mitigate them uh, and you can prioritize those issues. Um, an incident is responded to by a company security incident response team, the CSERT, which is pre-arranged group of employees with technical knowledge about the systems and our current incident. To successfully solve an incident, these steps are often referred as the six phases of incident response that takes place listed in the table below. Okay, so these are the phases of incident response that they want us to know. Uh, so preparation, do we have the resources and plans in place to deal with the security incident? Then identification, has a threat and the threat actor been correctly identified in order for us to respond to? That is very important. You can't respond to an incident that you didn't um, identify yet. Then containment, uh, can the threat security incident be contained to prevent other systems or users from being impacted? Uh, eradication, remove completely the active threat. And then recovery, trying to get things um, at a normal state. Uh, return to business as usual operations and then uh, this is very underrated but is very important lessons learned um, the CSER team has to do some kind of exercise at the end of an incident response to make sure they they got um, the experience and the knowledge to deal with these kind of incidents and threats for next time um, and there are a lot of exercises they do like tabletop exercises uh, they, they do meetings uh, to make sure they um, understood what happened and if what they did to solve the issue was the, the correct things to do uh, or were the correct things to do, sorry. Um, yeah, what can be learned from the incident? Uh, for example, if it was due to a phishing email, employees should be trained better to detect phishing emails. Yeah, so lessons learned are also important for you to know what you should do uh, to prevent the incident from happening again. Now, what model outlines spoofing? So we talked about two models here. Uh, we talked about uh, Stride and Pasta. And as you can see, S uh, from Stride stands for spoofing. So here the answer is Stride. Now, what does the acronym IR stand for? So this is incident response. Um, yeah, you have the CSER team is a computer security incident response team. So yeah, um, incident response. And then you are asked, um, you are tasked with adding some measures to an application to improve the integrity of data. What stride principle is this? Okay, so let's look at the stride principles. So when you're talking about integrity uh, here, the principle that applies is tampering. And as you can see, by providing anti-tampering measures to a system or application, you help provide integrity to the data. Data that is accessed must be kept integral and accurate. For example, shops use seals on food products. Okay, so here is tampering. And then for our last question, an attacker has penetrated your organization's security and stolen data. It is your task to return the organization to business as usual. What incident response stage is this? So let's look at our incident response stages. So as you can see, it's if you want to get back to normal, it's not about preparation or identification, containment, eradication, but it's about recovery. So you have to perform a full review of the impacted systems to return to business as usual operations. That's what you want to do if you want to get back um, at the normal um, stage of your business. Okay, so let's just type here recovery. And we are all done. Let's see my tickets. I, I guess I, I want some tickets. Oh, what happened? I don't know. But hey, it's completed. Let me just check here on the learning path if it's 
already done yeah it is so we are five percent done from all the path and next episode will be on this introduction to web hacking um section and we will do this first room which is walking an application and the objective will be manual manually review a web application for security issues using only your browser's developer tools hacking with just your browser no tools or scripts that should be fun so i guess i'll see you in the next video i hope you enjoyed this video uh, make sure you leave a like if you liked it and if you didn't like it make sure you press the dislike button twice so i know you didn't like it that much um and yeah i'll see you in the next one bye